In television and radio, I am Fabian Sweel. We'll begin with tonight's headlines. ACC arrests teachers and students of Joshua International School for alleged examination malpractice. Maths, science. NDMA, an Afrocell mobile company, launched 1199 toll free line. I'm going to be elated to note that the approved package from Afrocell will equip us to timely respond to emergencies. APC 21 Man Committee warns party stakeholders to avoid support group activities during National Delegate Conference. As one APC, I will recover from Makeli as one APC stronger. Now for the full news, the Phoebians will. The Scorpion Squad, the Scorpion Squad of the Anti-Corruption Commission has raided and arrested teachers, students and occupants of a dwelling house at Joshua International Academy School Compound at Campbell Street, Wellington for allegedly involving in examination malpractice, which is against the 2019 Amended Act of the ACC. Aliu Alvin Kago has more. Financial accounting. So, test one. Okay. So, then a photocopy of. Don't get the paper. Now, answers, answers, answers. Questions, answers. What in this? Now, exam paper. Yes, now, 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 that was the scene at the resident inside the school compound of Joshua International Academy at Campbell Street, Wellington. The senior education officer at the ACC, Sylvanus Blake, explained the outcome and the repercussion based on the law if anyone is guilty of academic malpractice. It was true. Yesterday, the Scorpion Squad did conduct a raid at the Joshua International Academy School in Wellington, Industrial Estate area, uh, around 9 a.m. in the morning. It was um, a follow-up on an intelligence we had received about suspicious activities um, connected with the ongoing West African Senior School Certificate examinations. Um, Sierra Leonean School recall that um, the ACC did put out a public notice warning all to stay off um, practices that may constitute um, academic malpractices and um, the amendment to the act we had in 2019 that has now criminalized academic malpractices did not say a teacher it said any person who perpetrate malpractices in a program or business organized by the education authorities in this country has committed an offense and the punishment for that when convicted is 15 million euros, five years in jail or both. The commission further encourages all Sierra Leonean to support the commission in the fight to combat corruption in Sierra Leone. Ali Alvin Kagbo, AYV News, Freetown. Now, the National yes, the National Disaster Management Agency and Afrocell Mobile Company have launched 1199 as a toll-free number which will be used to prevent, uh, well, to report incidents of emergencies and also allow the agency send disaster management information to the public. Memonato Bangua reports. Disaster management, according to the Director General of the National Disaster Management Agency, is a collaborative and coordinated effort where everyone must take active part. The launch of this toll-free number by AFRICEL is part of AFRICEL collaborative efforts to support the agency to protect lives and property. Director General of the National Disaster Management Agency appreciates AFRICEL, stating that the toll-free line will help immensely in their operations. I am equally elated to note that the approved package from Afrocell will equip us to timely respond to emergencies and will be immense support in reducing the risk of hazards across the country. Having a communication system in place 
that can be freely accessible will make it easier and affordable for people to reach out and report incidences of disasters, report cases of illegal activities such as deforestation, sand mining, construction of houses beyond rape zones, on wetlands and stone mining in protected areas. The Chief Corporate Affairs Officer of AfriCell, Joe Abbas Bangura, explains how the toll-free lines operate. So, the platform, what's the, what have you been told, the code is 1199 and it's star 1199 hash. Um, I've, you know, tied it over and over again, and actually, I don't know if it's allowed, but I've registered for notification for all provinces in the country. <laughs> so, so, because what you do if you do star, star hash and um, star 1199 hash, it gives you, you want to subscribe, you say yes. It asks you for the provinces you want to subscribe for. Um, and you could select north, west, north, south, and north or south, and east, northwest. And it also gives you the option to be able to subscribe for um, all provinces in the country. Once you do that, um, it asks you to confirm your uh, subscription uh, in the locations that you have, and then sends you an SMS to say you are now subscribed. And, and what happens is that NDMA will be putting out this information, critical information, from the various regions. Um, based on the feedback they're getting, um, you know, this is what the weather forecast is. Please be mindful when you're going out. Those information, you cannot overemphasize the value that they have to preempt and to get people to be aware of the potential dangers that they wouldn't even know. While launching the toll-free number, the Minister of Information said that Government is committed to prevent disaster in the country. This government is quite committed to ensuring that uh, as a country we are all able to live in an enabling environment where we could all realize our fullest potentials. So again, talking about synergies, I see a lot of opportunity for the two organizations, the two body organizations. You are actually about a year older than me. You know, but like both organizations, you started punching above your weight. I am so very proud that, um, you know, of the, of the two leaderships that is led by a lady. As part of the package, AfriCell also donated 185 mobile phones with free CUG SIM cards to ensure effective communication among staff of the agency across the country. And also allocated one app radio program on Afri Radio to educate the public on disaster management and prevention. Memonatu Bangura, AYV News, Freetown. Now, the 21-man committee of the All People's Congress Party has reminded party stakeholders and membership that there will be no flag bearer and other office bearer banners, uh, paraphernalia and support group activities at the National Delegates Conference later for 17th, 18th and 19th September 2021. The statement also revealed that a breach of the court order is tantamount to contempt of court. This was revealed in a press conference held at the party's headquarters in Freetown. Joseph Johnson was in attendance in our reports. They are set to go for a convention and return as a united party. So we have gone to Makebi as one APC and we have come back from Makebi as one APC stronger. But it will not be a normal or traditional APC convention because it is guided by a court order. We also wish to we also wish to remind all our stakeholders and membership at large that the court order calls for a sole agenda that there will be no flag bearer and other office bearer banners, paraphernalia, and support group activities at the National Delegate Conference on the 17th, 18th, and 19th September 2021. And that, and that any, and that any breach of the court order will be tantamount to contempt of court. The APC party, the African Peter Conte faction, the NRM faction, the diaspora faction, and the Big Six faction, will now allow the party to achieve its aims and objectives. The intention of the good faith reasoning behind the request made by the party leadership when it requested 
for the variation of the court order. We are confident that this process will also enhance our path to overcome our challenges and build a united force to win the presidential election in 2023. It could be recalled that after losing the 2018 presidential elections, the party had different factions, constitutional issues and other factors that led to a court case. The case, which is under Justice Adrian Fisher, was directed through a court order to form an emergency delegate conference technical committee consisting of 21 men. The committee was mandated to plan and prepare for the delegate conference. This is a self-awareness and the determination by the party is to settle their own issues out of court moving forward. That means now, in the new constitution, we don't provide for the establishment of an elders' council. We also don't make provision for the establishment of a number of committees. And one of these committees that for bring about peace and reconciliation. So going forward, we will try for the avoid the tear. May it not happen again. Joseph Johnson, AYV News, Freetown. Risk Communications Pillar Lead at NACOVAC, Harold Thomas, has called on Sierra Leoneans to continue hand washing, face masking, and social distancing as the lifting of the COVID restrictions does not mean that COVID is no more. Harold said this and more while updating AYV on the lifting of the COVID 19 restrictions in the country. Our health reporter Swaliho Vandi has more. COVID 19 restrictions have once been eased in Sierra Leone. As a result of the country seeing a low level of cases, low positivity rates, hospitalization, and death, this decision by NACOVAC is also influenced by the increased level of vaccine uptake across the country. Rick's communication pillar lead at NACOVAC, Harold Thomas, spoke more on some of the reasons for the lifting of the restrictions. We are going by the science, the data, and um, if we, um, you know, um, after the third, we, the third wave, we have made sure that we have, the, the, the curve was actually bent, and then we maintain, you know, um, steady zeros, and then occasionally single digits. And then, but we cannot continue on this posture, because much as we are trying to prevent illnesses, alleviating suffering and promoting health, we also need to protect livelihoods as well. So as the situation demands, then let's see how it plays, we, we, you know, we ease these restrictions with other precautionary measures. But we will revert at any time if um, the, the science or the data proves otherwise. And we are appealing to people to abide by the precautionary measures so that we don't reverse some of the decisions. The curfew and other restrictions had negatively impacted businesses across the country, as expressed by these citizens. Yes, up to the way they do business during the day. Yes, other people the way they do business from seven o'clock to morning. You understand? That if they can blend all them people and they can do business one great time, that can make things difficult for people here. Most of you gladly, because some of the customers them, they say right now business slow for them. Due to the coffee, when you don't lift up, we are happy over that. Though the restrictions have been lifted, NACOVAC, however, cautioned citizens to do the needful in order to prevent the country from going back to those restrictions. Swale Hovandi, AYV News, Freetown. Institute of Public Administration and Management, IPAM, University of Sierra Leone, has conducted an online voting system demonstration ahead of the college 
the college students' union elections. Now, according to the uh, deputy registrar, Brian Mabba, this is geared towards ensuring students and the public become well informed with the online voting process. He made this statement during the demonstration process at the campus. Michael John Fofana has more. Over the years, elections, as well as other students' activities, have been prone to violence fostered by division among students. It is in that light that the Institute of Public Administration and Management, IPAM, University of Sierra Leone, limit fit to conduct a demonstration process on how students can vote online. If you see us, we are embarking on first-time online voting. This is going to be the first in history of institutions in Sierra Leone. We have had a lot of disruption of property and damage to people, members of the public as well as innocent students. IPAM as a college is a college that is dominated by female students. Most of them, as administration, we are aware, they are very, very young children, if you like. These are not adults. These are people, students coming from school, and they are still very much under students and guidance. So the idea of them being scared by a few violent students is something that we want to address. So that is one of the main rationale for us adopting this online voting system this time around. Because we want to limit the risk of physical encounter among the students. Deputy IT Director Michael Kamara demonstrated how the online voting process works. Students can vote. You can vote by mobile app. We developed a mobile application which is online. So, for, and uh, since we are here to, to see exactly how the system works, I advise that some of you go on Play Store and try to download the app. And uh, if you do not have, if you do not want to download the app, you can easily go to USL.tv or SL website. So here, once the student log in, they will come here and click on online voting. And if there is an election, they will see the election again. And here, they will click on cast votes. And once they click on cast votes, they will see the list of candidates. And these are the, the candidates that we have for now. And you will see the name of the candidate because the level of the candidate. Then all of them has what we call radio voting. So here, if I want to vote for this candidate, I will have to click here. If I change my mind, I will have to click here. So it depends to the candidate that you want to vote for. However, the Students' Union election is scheduled to take place on the 18th of September, 2021. Michael John Fofana, AYV News in Freetown. This is Primetime News on AYV television and radio. Stay tuned for more stories after this break. Get all your breaking, factual and balanced local and international news from AYV Direct to your mobile phone via SMS. To subscribe on Afrosol, send start to 298 and stay connected for only 300 leons per day. Right, welcome back. I am Phoebe Sweel, and this is AYV's Primetime News. Still in the news tonight, the Director General of the National Minerals Agency, Julius Matai, has encouraged mining companies to make good use of the data from the nationwide airborne geophysical survey as an investment opportunity. He made this plea during a technical workshop on the data deliverables from the survey. Ronald Jomorovia has more. A little information on where to find what, just in front of you. 
The engagement with mining companies is a follow-up to the launch of the geodata from the nationwide airborne geophysical survey in 2019. The technical workshop on the data deliverables from the survey, among other things, is to present a data set to exploration and mining companies with the aim of enhancing their knowledge and the use of various geophysical data products while providing them the know-how on navigating the geoscience portal. The engagement also provided participants the mining favorability maps for bauxite will time gold iron ore among others so my advice is look at data management as a business function so when you get this data set talk to your decision makers making sure you have the right software and they cost a lot of money making sure you have the hardware as well to manage this data set as much as we're a public institution as much as we want various end users to benefit from this data set but we also have to make sure that manage in a way that the institution or the government can also uh, derive some money from it and plow that money back. We want to internalize it in our functions to ensure that we can uh, progress. Currently, we've just done radiometrics and uh, magnetics. There are big plans to do electromagnetic survey. We want to be able to augment that by geochemical survey. So there's a long way to go. But of what importance is such data to the operation of mining companies? Some of the participants had this to say. The search of minerals is one of the most important things in the mineral sector because if you can't find the minerals, you don't mine. And the search of minerals can be expensive. It, it's, it's highly, it's, I mean, it's labor intensive and it takes a lot of time. So what the Airborne Geophysical Survey has done is it has actually giving us an indication of where you can how you can find potential minerals. So what that does is it helps the geologists in the field and other scientists in the exploration to pinpoint areas of target. So you can look at the data and say I'm going to X and Y coordinates to look for elminite, to look for diamonds, to look for kimberlite, to look for nickel. All sorts of minerals. That's what the Yabon Express of has done for. The geodata, according to the agency, is a protected asset of Sierra and will be sold to mining companies at a reasonable cost. However, there is no clear time as to when the data will, will be available for purchase. Ronald Jumovia, AYV News, Freetown. Now, free education project in the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education has introduced a grievance response mechanism. Among other things, this is to seek redress in the event one feels dissatisfied on issues relating to the project. Now, a team from this project was in Makini to popularize the initiative. Augusta fl reports. Sierra Leone Fee Education Project under the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education has developed a grievance response mechanism. Among other things, this unit is responsible to provide platform wherein Complaints or unfair treatment are documented and addressed satisfactorily. In the north, a two-day engagement on the popularization of the grievance response mechanism was hosted in McKinney, and participants represented various sectors. How important is this unit? Senior Bakal Social Development Specialist, Sierra Leone Free Education Project responds. The grievance address mechanism basically is an instrument or a tool which, a, through which stakeholders and um, implementing partners, mainly the NDSSE, can be able to resolve grievances that issues or issues or dissatisfaction that they feel was brought about to them as a result of either project policies, project activities and other actions. So this grievance redress mechanism is going to be a system or an instrument through which you can bring your complaints and you know for sure that there will be someone or there will be a process for listening to and addressing your issues or your grievances that you have with the project. For attendees, the information of this unit is a welcome development. It's very important to me personally and also I'm sure it will benefit the community and the country. In as much as we are here, there are a lot of things that uh, I've learned today, I mean these past two days. Things that I never knew, I've learned them now. I know some of the things we do, I've been, we have been doing them, but we, we never knew they were crimes. So now we know that they are crimes. I'll make sure I will encourage people in the community, I will explain to them, so that they too will realize that the things that we have been doing, some of them are, are not good for society. 
very, very important, especially to us as persons living with disability. You know, we are talking about grievances, redress mechanism. And as persons with disability, we have lots of grievances in terms of uh, deprivation, discrimination, marginalization, accessibility, inclusion, you name them. So I think this particular um, uh, workshop is a, a recipe for us to see that we are managed well. For AYV Prime Time News here in the North, I am Augusta FL Touye reporting. Now, a disabled couple and their four children in Bo have been reportedly evicted and are currently looking for accommodation and food to survive. The head of the family, Alusain Lamina, said their greatest disappointment is family abandonment due to their disability. George Philip Jambawai caught up with them as they continue to plead for assistance. A family of four is living in this one-room building at Stengoabo in Bo City. Mr. and Mrs. Lamina are disabled persons currently seeking accommodation and food to survive. They have been asked to vacate this building after serving as caretakers for some years. This notice has interrupted their happiness. People there, that they help me. They make me pick in there. Right now, we're not going to do a place. This September, I go to don't put me. I'm not going to do a place. I just do no more now. I have to work. Me, I know well back. I mean, I'm not disabled. The woman are disabled. Their survival is primarily street begging, which they said is no longer lucrative. Thanks to the country's free quality education project, their children are all going to school. Both their feeding, dress, transportation to go to school, education, and now lodging are their greatest worries. Intermittently, they said, some people donate to augment their survivor, or the wife visit different homes to carry out domestic functions to accumulate leftovers to support the family. She said she is tired of such and wants the capital to start a business. <laughs> Before their partnership, both of them were able-bodied persons and were loved and embraced by their families. The wife said she was shot by rebels during the 1991 rebel war in the country and never regained her posture. The husband said he became a disabled when a weak diamond pit collapsed on them while in search of survival. Hence, abandonment in their life started. The reason both came together as husband and wife. Some of the family, they need the guys. Let me show where they are, my family, some of their guests, but they already help me. They already help me. They do nothing for me. They... But why they abandon me? Hey, because I will not disable them. Government disperses monies and food items at the peak of COVID-19 for disabled and other vulnerable persons, but these people said they have never benefited from any. Their number one priority now is accommodation, or they remain homeless. Ministry of Social Welfare, when contacted, said that they have no provision to help them get accommodation. George Philip Jambawai, AYV, Bo. And now in sports, head coach for Sierra Leone women's under-20 national team, Victoria Conte, has prepared her squad of 25 players ahead of their Costa Rica 2022 FIFA Women's Under-20 World Cup qualifiers against Guinea. According to coach Conte, the team is well prepared and in high spirit ahead of the qualifiers. She made this statement during the team's training session at the Sierra Leone Football Academy in Freetown. Michael John Fofana, sports correspondent, reports. Sierra Leone women's under 20 is set to face their Guinean counterpart in the first leg of the FIFA U20 Women's World Cup Costa Rica 2022 qualifying. The contest has been scheduled to take place on Saturday 25th September in Guinea and October 9, 2021 at home in the return leg. While speaking to the head coach for the under 20 female side, Victoria Conte, she spoke on the team's preparedness ahead of the clash. Well, the team they go perfectly good, you know, with the team intensive team because one team, one being girl and kind of this country, and not only did they neglect with the woman, so we still found try for make sure say this team will be the team, will be all the best that we, Madam, where's them talking to now, Madam K, we shall go boosting him up. This me start for play football, I don't feel say Guinea gets and we get caught over with. And at the, the people of Sierra Leone say, 
We go continue for Saturday, Kodo and Guinea them. Anytime we meet them. And let the people out there pray for the man to move them. We also want back and pray for the man. You know, we always talk to the man and the woman say the drum. So let them pray for we love you, say for the go where they come, then for gladly for me. However, Coach Victoria Conte has prepared a squad of 25 players after the initial 42 invited for trials. The former Eastern Tigers coach has continued training at the Bow Stadium located in the southern part of Sierra Leone and the Sierra Football Academy in Freetown. Michael John Fofana, AYV Sports in Freetown. And the SLFA and other partners have launched the Leon Stars Supporters Tour for the 2021 AFCON in Cameroon. Delivering his keynote address, President Bio says there is need for the private sector to be on board to ensure the team is well represented in Cameroon next year. Ransford McLean reports. Lata, I say thank you for coming together peacefully and presenting a forum, a platform where we can actually work together to make sports teams beautiful again in this country. Let the days of prayers and fighting be a thing of the past. So today, we have invested in sports, in football in particular. And I do so because in my DNA, there is some sporting element. I love it. I enjoy it. But above all, as a leader of this country, I love the things that unite we as Sierra Leoneans. But you cannot be leaders wherever you are. Our nation needs your support. The team needs your support. Don't make money here and take everything away. So, if they not come, maybe we need to invite them. Not a commercial bank no more than a saloon. Not a free no more than a saloon. This is not fair. Let's share in the glory, let's share in the responsibility. So, I go on from make we make sure, say, Mr. President, we get a list. This time round, Mr. Sobeliza Begde. Because some causes are worthy and this is one. If I go, if I go from Angelaji, for make Leon Star win, and for make we support us, then go, and then you support us, then go, then I'll be a happy beggar. So, now we talk about our name. Firstly, we should learn to abide by the rules of the game. We will be going to AFCON. It's an international tournament. I don't want to be embarrassed at any given time. My first experience in Guinea wasn't nothing good to write home about. We managed it. Cameroon is in Central African Republic. Please, we are here to launch the supporters tour package. If you cannot afford it, don't come to Cameroon to embarrass us. Rule number one. Rule number two. This football is being run by international organizations. CAF. They regulate us. This is not about Nina Saloma. This is about playing by the rules of the game. Meaning, if we are going to Cameroon, we don't have any right to stop any Sierra Leonean from printing whatever you want to. 
Well, that's the end of primetime news for tonight. For more stories, visit our website on www.ayvnews.com. If you have any comments on the news bulletin, please send us an email to info at ayvnews.com. I am Phoebe Swill. Thanks for watching and listening. Have a good night. Stay safe. Cheers. watching AYV television. Oh my God. Timo! Oh, how much grab you? I go down corner to you, to the corner. Who is doing this to me? You wait. I'm wet. That's only for me. Now you're going to go down corner. Where are you going? Me not a simple punch or choke, you know. So who's the walking night? Now you know what you mean. What tell me, say, you know, what's better, Salo? Betty Salo? Timo, tell me what you know, Betty Salo. I know, not a new cab, not a new coffee, you don't come. What then, I look to office here, Betty Salo. Head at the roof to one and the new look to Betty Salo online. How can they bet this? Now you know, not as plain as the key, so. What can they tell me that they don't pick it? You put your money, you post it back, or go. That's why I wanted the phone and I was waiting up. They are ready for the camera. So if you crap, all crap no one is winning. In the seminar, of course. No. Let me just spend a call by this phone. Now, what's the clear this if you see it done? At the corner of the office, direct. Now, the two offices are the second team. I don't think I don't think I